Hi friends, uh, let me get you to the core of arthroplasty. I have myself experienced this air. I have seen how they work there and I see the man who heads the team right in Germany at Escalpios, the director, Professor Heiko Greichen. Welcome to Conceptual Orthopedics, sir. My first question to you, if I have to choose orthoplasty as a branch and I am during my residency of orthopedics, but I, I am thrilled by being a joint replacement surgeon, how do I shape my career or how do I plan to go about it, sir? I think you, you should have an interest um, combining theory and practical skills. So um, as I try to teach uh, my residents, um, although you're an orthoplast or want to become an orthoplasty surgeon, you still have to read a lot of books. You have to understand the procedure before you start uh, uh, doing the first one. So there, there is a lot of learning um, before you can uh, start your career. This is comparable to all the other fields. So it is uh, nothing uh, different, but some of the arthroplasty surgeons, they are so much focused on the procedure and they will not get uh, very good results. So be patient and try to learn as hard as you can. And uh, I always recommend to see different places. So if that is possible in, in your career, uh, try to use that option um, because you always can pick some highlights from, from every surgeon and also some maybe not perfect things uh, can be helpful for you um, in your later career. Thank you, sir. That comes to my second question. You've been a navigation replacement surgeon. And uh, if I want to be a navigation replacement surgeon, do I go to a center which works on navigation or do I go to the first center I get an opportunity on? So should I start my training right from the place where navigation is the primary thing or any high volume arthroplasty center should be the point of focus? How do I choose if I get a fellowship in India or abroad? So I think, um, first of all, you should understand the principles of the surgery. And this is independent whether you're a conventional surgeon or a navigated surgeon or a robotic surgeon. So start your career um, in a high volume center where you see as, as much uh, conventional surgery as, as you can. You have to understand that, that the different workflows, the different philosophies. And if you have collected them in, in your head and uh, cleared them, then it's, it's a good uh, time point. If you're interested in, in digital technology to go to a specialized center uh, where they do that 100%, I think um, it's a yes or no decision. If you're convinced on digital technology, then you will never jump back. So this is, uh, and then you learn it from the experts again. Right, sir. And the third point, an arthroplasty career throughout the world is somehow reaching a threshold. There's a lot of competition because this is the number one done procedure in the world in, in orthopedics if you take a knee being the most commonly replaced joint if you take into account. Mm -hmm. Do you think as a young surgeon, I will have a scope? I have all the doubts. I get this mail number one. Is it saturated or still mm -hmm. there's a scope? Um, the, I think there, there are different uh, structures um, in, in orthopedic centers. What, what we now have changed, we build it teams on joints. So that means that one team is treating everything in the knee from the smallest arthroscopy to the largest knee revision, the same for the shoulder, the same for the hip, the same for foot and ankle or the hand surgery. So that, that means they are expert in one joint 
Um, and of course, in their career, before they're really the expert, they um, see the different joint centers in, in my hospital. So this is uh, how we want to um, overcome that problem that no one wants to scope. You're, you're right. So that is uh, that can, can be a problem. Um, but um, to be honest, I think uh, good arthroscopy has plays a big, big role um, in, in treating um, knees and only a few knees finally will uh, will be treated by a total or, or partial uh, knee arthroplasty. So it's, it's a long way. And you as a doctor, you should be a knee specialist. So li like the internal medicine has a heart specialist or, or a liver specialist, you're the knee specialist and you can help the patient from conservative treatment up to the latest revision, everything you're the expert on. I think that's that's the um, that's the answer for that. Right, and the last question, sir. Yep. Orthopedics as a branch for females. <laughs> I I um, I definitely um, see there is a change. Um, so when I look back at at my department um, ten years back, there was no female. Uh, nowadays, we have uh, almost 30% of our doctors are female, so there is a tendency, but uh, you are right, um, there are fields in orthopedics that are may maybe more female than others. I think a hip surgeon, um, he has to do a lot of, of hard work, especially an obese patient and hammering and all that, so maybe that's not the best field for a female, but if you look at shoulder, elbow, hand, foot and ankle, and even the knee. Um, they can be experts in that. They have to be interested in, 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 in uh, you know, in joints and uh, in ligaments and reconstruction and, and all that. So if they love that, they're a perfect candidate. Then there's not a big difference between a man and a, and a, and a woman. Right, so it's an art, basically. It's just not the manual work. This is um, what I always try to, to tell my youngsters. It's a bit of an art and you have to be passionate about that. Right, so passion is the word that drives everything in the world. So. Yes. Sir. And uh, thank you uh, for this small talk and thank you for the wonderful talk, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Yes. As what? Well.